Chris, you know what? I'm going to tell you something. Uh, we were very curious about your your appearance here, uh, A, because um, even though we had never met, sure. uh, we, we, we had been led to believe that there would, might, be some, uh, might be some animosity on your part years ago. And, and my point being that I, I find you come in here and I find you very cordial. I find you, not surprisingly, uh, telling us things that were reported that aren't necessarily accurate. And I've been dealing with that for the last six months more so than ever before. So that doesn't surprise me. Mm-hmm. And I assume that there, there are no hard feelings. Do you remember f- uh, filing a complaint? I do remember that, yes. And I can't remember the whole thing, but uh, I remember it had something to do with that movie, something about Mary. I think it was, I can't, you know, I can't remember everything about it. Mm-hmm. But I do remember I was referred to, I think it was one of you guys, I don't I know which one, yeah. uh, as one of the characters in that in that sh- in that movie. Mm. And I received a lot of phone calls from my constituents after that. Mm-hmm. They said, you know, they can attack you. And I can be attacked personally. I have no problem. With okay. That. You know, right. Personally or, you know, my policies, you know, whatever I stood for, that I have no problem. Okay. I have thick skin, right. no problem. I have no animosity towards you guys. Right. Uh, your guy called me up and, you know, I called you back right away. Um, but... I, I work for my constituents right? and my, my former constituents. Now I'm trying to regain their trust and basically get back to, you know, helping the district. I go up and down the streets of the district. I know almost every street by memory. Mm. And, and, you know, you see dilapidated buildings, boarded up single family homes. That shouldn't happen in this state. Mm-hmm. Uh, our, our budget's gone from $24 billion a year when I was there to $28 billion, And the 9th District has lost a lot. And the stuff that I brought in... I mean, my opponent talks about this data center uh, on on different, I don't know about this station, but he's talked about it on different uh, stations. And uh, <laughs> I would have to say not this station uh, since this I wasn't station. sure who he was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, okay. So there you go. Maybe yeah. he will. Maybe he'll call you now. <laughs> and but, I know who Sean Kern is. I just yeah. didn't remember what seat he had. Uh, he talks about that center. That thing doesn't even sit in the 9th District. Yeah. So, I mean, it's great. And, you know, uh, he talks about the city of Springfield, city of Springfield. We're running for state representative. We're not running for for the city, city of Springfield because right. your district also covers yeah, Chicopee. Right, covers a little bit of Chicopee. But, right, you know, there's 160 state reps down there, and they're all vying for a piece of that 28 billion. So you need a, a guy who knows his way around. Uh, you know, I'm fortunate to have a lot of my friends that when I came in 10 years ago, they're now uh, chairman. Well, these 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 constituents that you speak of and, and talk to. Do you find that many of them believe that you got caught up in something that you had no control over, or do many of them believe that your father got railroaded? Well, I think they, I, I can only speak for myself. Um, uh, a lot of them, you know, they, they equate it to some, some of them have come to me and different uh, varying people and said, it's almost like you were on a, a beach, Chris, and a tidal wave came, and there was no way you were going to stop that. Mm-hmm. And that was just, uh, and it's true. I mean, I, you know, uh, I had this. I was a state rep, and uh, you know that's just the way it went. But, but I wonder how much you were. Do you worry that the guilt of association, just by having the well, same name, is going to work against you? I love my father. I mean, I'll never, I'll never deny my father. But you know, he's he made he did a lot of things wrong, and he's paying for it uh, as we speak right now. And I can only take responsibility for what I did, and I took responsibility, and I'm sorry to the. You know, I don't know. I think only by can I regain. People's trust is the only way to do it is to go to door to door and go talk to them like I'm sort of talking to you mm-hmm. now. Uh, and I've done that already. I've, I've already gone. I have nomination papers. I have volunteers still that have come up to me, uh, many that I had before, many new ones. Uh, you know, unfortunately, some people left uh, the area. So, uh, But I have a volunteer staff and a lot of seniors and a lot of young and a lot of uh, Hispanic and black. You know, so mm-hmm. it's, it's a mixed match. So I'm getting... You know, I'm getting people, and, and they like to talk to me. And I, they can talk to me on anything they want to talk about at the door. They want to talk about issues, which I think is really where we should be going. Uh, you, know, you know, there's a lot of things that, uh, you know, where's this? You know, they asked me, who's the current state rep? Mm-hmm. Well, I was your former rep, and I want to be the rep again. So. Yeah, I, I mean no uh, no disrespect here, Chris. Um, yeah, and I'm sure you feel, uh, you know, bad for the position you've been in and, uh, and, and bad for the restitution you've had to pay. But I think for voters, it's very easy to hear you say, I'm sorry yeah. uh, about what's happened. Yeah. On the other hand, these things still happened. And Absolutely. you know whether you, you can fully say, yes, I did it and yeah. I want to move on and really mean it yeah. uh, and understand exactly what, what happened, I think people have got to come to terms with that before they can yeah, cons- I, consider I, either signing your nomination sure, papers sure. or placing a vote in your, in your hands. 
I understand that fully back. So I, I understand what you're saying. And I get, you know, by what you read, I see it on the, you know, you have it on the online here. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I wouldn't be like, uh, yeah, I wouldn't vote for that guy either. Right. I mean, you know, that's right. like a, you know, then that is what they read five, six years ago about me. And I wasn't able to speak as freely as I am. I could never come on the air with you guys when right. I was under indictment and, right. you know, by legal counsel, you can't do that kind of stuff because whatever you say, they can use it against you. So I had to be no comment was everything. Right. Now what I'm trying to do is uh, give the other side of the token. Look at I did I did things wrong. I I did pay handily. You know I missed my kids while I was away. I have twin daughters. Uh, that's why I came in at this time because I have to bring them to school every day. But uh, and then I go to work. But the only way that I can regain their trust, I believe, is to go to the doors, go to coffee hours, go to different things. Some of them will not be with me, and I perfectly understand that. Well, you know, Some of them will. And, and like I said, I, I really, I've been for for most of this year and even late last year, I've really been questioning the validity of a lot of things in the media lately, uh, particularly locally. And, and and now you come in here and you refute these, a few of these things, or you at least try to explain them mm-hmm. differently. And I understand that. And and people are going to make their decisions because even though you do go door door to door, no matter how many times you go out into the area to meet people, the bulk of these people are going to base their opinions on what they read, see, and hear in the media. There was some concern back then that you might have some mental issues, uh, that there was some uh, temper problems. Were those misreported? uh, No, I don't think they were misreported. I was younger then. I'm 41 now, and I was younger then, and I was under a lot of pressure. I mean, I hope that you guys and anybody that I know never has to go through what I, what I went through because it's not fun. And you get, you get it from all sides and uh, the pressure on you, you know, the mental, it's, it's anguish. You see your wife, you know, crying and you see, you know, the, the kids, God bless them, they were only very young. So they didn't really know, you know, they were very young, two, three years old. Uh, but it's very difficult. So did I have a quicker temper then? Absolutely. But I mellowed out quite a bit, I think, with fatherhood. I mellowed out uh, and just went. I had a life changing experience. Mm-hmm. No question. Mm-hmm. I'm a different ball game now. Yeah. I'm a different guy. I, but I like to li- listen to Led Zeppelin. I just heard you say Led Zeppelin <laughs> and Pink Floyd. I, those are my, I, am a, I am a classic rock guy. Let me tell Good. you something. Good. I, so uh, I may put a request in before I leave, but uh, was that comfortably numb? Yeah. That's a good one. Sure. All right? Sure. But, uh, well, no. So that really, but I appreciate you know, giving me a few minutes of your time, and I know you guys are busy. Uh, and I do enjoy your show. I listen between this and the Sports Channel. Imagine what would have happened if you got yanked off the air from yeah, this. Yeah, imagine. That would have been, uh, you, imagine, been terrible. You would have regretted it. I would have regretted would you it. Not a, yes. Because not, I was going to actually say that to you guys. You I'm would glad not you're still be, in business. You would not be Chris Aslin, <laughs> convicted felon. You would be the guy who can the Baxen guy who O'Brien. Got rid of Baxen O'Brien. That's that right. Wrong. You want to live that, with that? that? Let me tell you something. I did you that. You want to live with that? Not at all. Let me tell you something, Chris. I appreciate your failure. And that in that way, I appreciate that. Yeah, exactly. And you know what? I, in a small way, have kept the economy going at least over here. So, and, I, and I want to, and I want to continue to do that. But back Very in, good, uh, in Chris. A- Chris Aslan, thanks for coming to the studio. It's nice Thank to you meet very you. Much. It's uh, Baxter O'Brien, Rock One Hundred Two.